coming up on this edition of Kojiko North Bay News. The long-awaited report from the provincial government in regards to long-term health care has been released. Where are these kids going? They're off to Disney World and remembering a glorious day in North Bay hockey history. Hello again and welcome to this edition of Kojiko North Bay News, truly local television. I'm Greg Estabrooks. The Ontario government is giving nursing homes $191 million to hire some 2,000 new staff as part of a promised revolution in long-term health care. Health Minister George Smitherman made the announcement in Queen's Park on Tuesday. The sweeping changes were sparked by last December's investigation by the Toronto Star newspaper into nursing homes that exposed widespread neglect. Smitherman also paid tribute to Nipissing MPP Minnick Smith, who the health minister said did a great service to Ontarians in her efforts to get this report completed. To advise you that I have received the written report uh, by Minnick Smith, the MPP for uh, Nipissing and my parliamentary assistant, on recommended changes to long-term care in the province of Ontario. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Speaker, on behalf of, in behalf of all Ontarians, I'd like to thank her for the work that she's done. And I'd like to thank the people of Nipissing for freeing her up from her local responsibilities to travel to all corners of the province, to make unannounced visits and the like for our long-term care. You're scaring us all. Minick's report, Minick's report, Commitment to Care, a plan for long-term care in Ontario. Her report is the result of our government's review of the province's long-term care system. Her report is an amazing accomplishment, Mr. Speaker, and it represents a real labor of love. Her report answers the question of how we can make long-term care homes be true homes for our loved ones. Homes where our parents, our, relative, our relatives, and friends are safe and enjoy a real sense of community. Mr. Speaker, more than 70,000 people live in long-term care homes in Ontario and our aging population will drive that number much higher in the future. That's why I would like to recognize the work as well of the Honourable John Garretson, the Minister responsible for seniors. All... For Nipissing MPP Minnick Smith, this is the culmination of about six months of crisscrossing the province, compiling information for a comprehensive report on long-term health care for seniors. We spoke to Smith on the telephone from Toronto. First off, Minnick, I wanted to ask you about that George had a lot of kind comments for you in the house. Yes, yes, it was very nice. It was a great day. I mean, I've been working on this report for, you know, since Christmas, and uh, it was nice to finally release it and have it uh, out in the public domain and uh, have a, an opportunity to speak about it publicly. And, um, and the minister made some comments about the report, which was great, and also made some announcements, which are uh, wonderful for the long-term care system. I know they're lengthy, and I know it could uh, take a lot of time to go through them, but uh, for television purposes, I guess the shortened version is there's almost $200 million being put into the system and maybe 2,000 more people being hired. How will that break down, Manika, who goes where? Well, we're, uh, we, that's yet to be determined. We've got, uh, we are um, committed to 600 new full-time nursing positions for RNs and RPNs, and that'll leave 1,400 other positions. It's about four, 566 long-term care facilities in the province. So that should break down to, you know, if you do the, the rough math, about four people, four new people per, uh, per facility, per home. And uh, overall, we, we um, used $531 million to, uh, for long-term care today, uh, the 191 for the new positions and uh, getting to higher standards, and then uh, another uh, amount to uh, fund the new beds that have been online in the past year. Now, one question I guess a lot of people will ask, given the, the deficit situation, is this taking money out of one envelope and putting it into another? Well, obviously, we've had to set our priorities, and uh, in next week's budget on Tuesday, we'll be able to you know, see the entire uh, display of our government's priorities and, and where we think uh, investments should be made. This is just one of them, um, but clearly the, uh, you know, the long-term care system was crying out for some investment. As I did my review, that became perfectly obvious. We needed some... Uh, some more staffing, we need uh, stronger standards, uh, but we also need to, an attitudinal shift and we need to make um, our facilities into homes again. And I think that doesn't cost a lot of money, but it's also a really important uh, part of the announcements today and part of my report. Final question, George Smithman made uh, reference to uh, you being out of the riding, doing a lot of uh, research and compiling the information for this report. I guess the next obvious question is now, is he gonna allow you the time to get back to your riding and attend to riding business a little more? 
Well, I've managed to keep my commitment to being in the riding every Friday since I was elected, and uh, I think I've missed one or two since then. So I've, uh, you know, I have been in the riding Fridays and weekends, and uh, the house is sitting now until the end of June, so that'll continue. But I'm hoping in July and August to be able to have a bit more time to spend in the riding and to maybe have a little bit of rest. We managed to get some local response to Tuesday's important announcement involving long-term care for Ontarians. It should mean better days ahead for facilities like Leisure World and Castle Home. Beth Campbell of Castle Home wants to see how all the details are fleshed out before making a totally informed comment. But the government, she says, could make facilities like Castle Home even more efficient than they already are. We're very pleased with the result by, of the report by Manick Smith. Manick spoke on a number of issues, the case mix index issue, the issue of our funding formula, the issue of increased accountability and uh, transparency in the system, uh, the need for uh, more direct care staff on the units, the reinstitution of 24-hour nursing care in the facility, which Castle Homes always had, but uh, it was a requirement that was removed by the previous government. So we think it's a very positive move for our industry in general, and we're delighted with the report. So it may be forcing uh, care facilities like this across the province to increase staffing again to meet uh, what's been a crying need for years? Um, actually, yes, there is no actually ratio of uh, professional nursing staff or um, unregistered nursing staff in the homes at the present time. In March, the Ministry of Labour laid six Occupational Health and Safety Act charges against North Bay General Hospital related to exposure of employees to nitrous oxide in the hospital's operating rooms. The Ministry of Labor alleges the hospital failed to complete workplace health and safety training and failed to meet standards for ventilation. One of the charges relates to the failure to establish health and safety measures for workers exposed to agents that may be a hazard during pregnancy. In 2003, the Ministry issued six compliance orders against the hospital. Hospital CEO Mark Hurst was in Sudbury. A local hospital official told Kojigo North Bay News that the hospital would not be issuing any statements in regards to the charges. North Bay general officials will be making their next court appearance on June 15th. Three teens face harassment charges after complaints from another youth. Police say between the 25th of January and the 9th of May, Three male youths have been following and chasing another male in the North Bay area. The male complained to police and the three were arrested. 19-year-old Tyler Brown of Albert Street, 19-year-old Brian Collette also of Albert Street, and a third youth, a 17-year-old young offender, face charges of criminal harassment. They are to appear in court on June 23rd. The city is about to undertake what it's calling a core services review. It's a process that will take a fine-tooth comb to all operations by City Hall and its staff. It's being conducted with an eye on how budgets are being spent, but it doesn't mean cuts are coming at City Hall. Part of our process, and, and it will work into our budget process. The City has never had a core services review, and what we're looking at is what we do, how we do it, and what availability do we have down the road to keep providing this service, and is it necessary? So. What do you want by the 30th of June? What we're going to get from staff is a priority list as to uh, uh, where we're going to zero down on this. Uh, if you remember last year, we had uh, $100,000 allocated to go outside and provide uh, services from a consultant to look at our core services review. That was cancelled and uh, this way we're going to do it in-house and we feel that we'll get a better in-depth uh, look at uh, what the services we do provide there. So that initial report is going to come back with uh, priorities uh, that staff field for, ca for council's consideration to look at uh, the further uh, review of those services and how we provide that service. What is it you're looking for? I inefficiencies? Certainly, we want to take a look and, and I mean, uh, there's a whole process that we have to go through. Um, there's mandatory services, there's services that are nice to have, there's all of these services that we provide, but do we know exactly what are every service that we provide here and does this council know and what the cost of that service is? So I think that it, it wraps into our budget uh, deliberations each and every year uh, when we take a look at our services because as we know, there's not a lot of money left to, to be found uh, and a lot, not a lot of fat within this organization. So we have to take a look at those services and 
you know, we're, we're definitely going to assign the cost to them. It's a major undertaking that a lot of municipalities apparently are doing, and uh, it sounds like we're going to be doing it in-house with staff who are way too busy already. And I'm just concerned that um, I'm hoping that we're not going down the lane we, where we're looking at cutting out services or, and that hasn't been said, so I don't want to have people get all excited about it. I just want to make sure that's not the direction we're headed in, that we're going to have a good look at the services that uh, we do provide and uh, maintain them and see if there's some that have to be improved. I hope that's what our objective is. The lives of four young North Bay girls will change big time in the next 48 hours as the Air Canada and Air Canada Jazz Dreams Take Flight promotion is underway. The girls will travel to Disney World in Florida for what should be a most memorable one-day visit. There was an obvious air of anticipation at Jack Garland Airport around noon on Tuesday as luggage and smile were sent through security. Air Canada donate the aircraft, fuel and crews volunteer for this assignment and one assignment they all enjoy. I'm looking forward to go to Florida to see Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck and all the rest of the Disney characters. We're going to go to try out, stay at the hotel and then go to Florida. Mm -hmm. And then what happens after that? And then we come back on Thursday. What kind of things um uh, would you like to, other than the rides, would you like to see? Oh, uh, like Walt Disney characters. Who's your favorite? Pooh Bear. And who after that? Piglet. Okay. And after that? Tigger. After that? Ear. After that? Rabbit. So what kind of things are you looking forward to see? Um, the big mountain rides and a bunch of roller coasters. And I'm looking forward to meeting Pooh Bear and a bunch of the other Disney characters. Well, this is the 15th year that Air Canada Dreams Take Flight program has, uh, has been that long and the 10th year for Jazz to be involved. And the whole purpose of this trip is to give some children who will never ever have the opportunity to go to Disney World uh, a day for them to remember for the rest of their lives, hopefully to turn some lives around and in some of the cases out of Toronto, not North Bay, to fulfill a last wish. There, there must be a, almost a, an endless way. It must be very difficult to assessing who's, who's actually deserving of, of this trip. Yes, it is. Uh, I do give that job to the agencies involved. Uh, I have two from the Children's Aid Society, one from the Association of Community Living Respite Services, and the other one from the Salvation Army. So it's their job to choose the child. Right. There are 300 children going down on Wednesday. We have two 767s, Mickey 1 and Mickey 2, which will be flying the children and all of the escorts down to Disney World in Florida. Uh, the week before the event is when I interview each child and give them the good news. And that is such a wonderful experience because their eyes just become like saucers. They really don't believe you. And you really have to keep telling them, yes, you are going to Disney World. It's just for the day. But uh, their expressions on their face is just wonderful. Well, it's that time of year again when the condition of your lawn will need some attention. The issue of chemicals versus natural source cures is becoming more user-friendly as companies source out environmentally products to replace the present chemicals. Master gardener John Tripp was at a Trout Lake residence recently, and along with the aeration work underway, he has some solutions for lawn care at this time of the year. Most of the larger companies now, uh, Nutrate and all these big companies, uh, I was at Landscape Ontario and I talked to most of them and uh, they are going definitely organic. They can see the handwriting on the wall, so they, they realize that, hey, pesticides and herbicides are on the way out. So they are going into natural products. These are uh, Longarium. This is the uh, the Japanese beetle. Yes. Now, uh, if you turn over your sod and you'll find these little white grubs, that's it. So you just put this in water, I showed them earlier, it's a little wee package. It doesn't look like much, but it works. Oh, yes. That's how it comes. I and see. The nematodes yes. are in that, mm -hmm. and you just rinse it around in water, yes. and then just pour it on your soil. Oh, I and see. And it goes down and kills, and it's specific. It won't kill anything else. It won't kill earthworms. It won't kill anything. It's biologically safe. Cinch bugs are, are, are sort of a common problem, too, that uh, many gardens have. That's right. And, and, and really... Uh, Cut the cut the roots of the the uh, the, the, yeah. the lawn. Well, uh, they 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 are at the surface. That thatch is bad for them. 
So you, you gotta either desatch or you get a desatching rake and, and take the thatch away. They overwinter in debris. Um, they are easy to identify. Uh, all you need is a can, a soup can or something like that, maybe that big around, mm -hmm. and just cut the top and bottom of it, put it in the ground, add some soap and water, and the chinch bugs are coming to the top. Now you can tell, identify a chinch bug because it's got a white cross on the back. All right. So you, it, 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 there's no other animal that does that. Excellent. And uh, they are killed easily. A familiar sight returned to the North Bay waterfront this week. The Chief Commander 2 was launched earlier this week with a full range of cruising packages being offered this season. The ship is almost ready to take on passengers to cruise Lake Nipissing for another summer season. Back with weather and a look ahead to Kelp Fest right after this. Six months ago, she didn't know what kidney disease was. Today, it affects every aspect of her life. Hours of dialysis don't leave much time for bedtime stories. She misses weekend camping trips. She misses family pizza night. And her daughter misses them too. Through research and patient services, the Kidney Foundation is helping to create a better life for patients and their families. Mm -hmm. July 24th, 6.30 p.m. Ben Bertrand leaps up off the couch, reaches for duct tape, tools, and a cardboard, and creates a monster. Why did Ben do this? Andrew. Andrew was why. Fatherhood. It's the best job on the planet. You can do it. October 14th, 4.48 p.m. Paul da Silva appears to have a complete meltdown in drive-home traffic. Why did Paul do this? Gina. Gina was why. Fatherhood. It's the best job on the planet. You can do it. How long has it been? About five minutes. So you think we're going to make it? Do we ever make it? Oh, here he comes. This is going to hurt. Pause any movie you order with Kojiko Video On Demand. And start it again whenever you're ready. No VCR, no DVD. Introducing Video On Demand from Kojiko Digital Cable. Welcome back, everyone. While the warm temperatures and sunny skies were greeted with smiles from pretty well everybody on Tuesday, but uh, the smiles won't remain all that much longer because things are going to get a little bit nastier in the next day or so. Temperatures still, well, above the norm for this time of the year. Let's go to the five-day outlook brought to you by our good friends at Environment Canada. Low of nine, cloudy periods overnight Tuesday, Wednesday 9 and 21, and a mix of sun and cloud with an outside chance of a thunderstorm. Cloudy on Thursday 12 and 17, rain expected on Friday 11 and 16, Saturday looks Pleasant, 6 and 14, and sunny. Rolling on to the Almanac page, no rain on Monday. Normals 3.5, 13.4. Temperatures on Monday, 0.5 and 19.3. All right, that's it for weather. Now joining me is Mr. Alex Spears to talk about uh, an event near and dear to his heart. And once he starts to talk, you'll know what it is. It's Kelp Fest 2004, a big deal for just every, not just Scots, but everybody. It's a big deal for the Scots and for those who would like to be Scots, you know. Which is everybody. Which is everybody, <laughs> yes. Uh, it's a calendar kelp fest. Uh, well, this is the, the fourth year. 2004 is the fourth year. It's the, uh, it's the most northerly uh, Celtic uh, celebration in, in, in Ontario. And uh, it's being very well represented uh, all over the province as far as... Uh, we have 50 Highland dancers coming this year for um, for a competition. We have uh, bands from all over Ontario, pipe bands from all over Ontario. We have a we have a sheep uh, herding competition uh, on the Saturday and also on the Sunday, where you can take your dog and and it can be taught how to chase sheep and herd them up. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's going to be a fiddle and a step dance uh, competition. On Friday night we have our Cayley, as you probably you call it a hoot nanny, or mm -hmm. uh, but we call it a Cayley, and we have a, a band from down south, uh, the Strange Potatoes, and they'll be uh, raising hell a little bit. And then on the Saturday we have um, the um, Hadrian's Wall. They was here; they were here last year, and they'll be at the field 
at the uh, in, in calendar at the community center and so it's going to be a great uh, great weekend just hopefully the weather will that's the big key that's if the, the weather's good it's yeah. huge yeah how many people did you think you had last year are you sure the number oh i don't know i wasn't really involved too much last year yeah. but this year i have been made the uh, honorary chieftain and uh, last year it was phil richardson of uh, mm -hmm. Uh, the mall, yeah. and uh, so it's the long and the short of it, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I uh, it was very, it was very well, uh, it was very well uh, last year with lots of people there. But the year before it was kind of cold, and it scares and people, it scares away, people yeah. away a little bit. No, when it, it's not that far off, is it? No, it's the twenty second of uh, of this month, twenty second of May, all day Saturday. And on the 21st, on the Saturday, on the Friday night, we have the Hootenanny or the Cayley mm -hmm. at the center in um, the community center in, um, in in Calendar. Are there tickets to buy for yeah, some of these events? Yeah, tickets. Uh, the Saturday night, the sa all day Saturday is ten dollars. Children, I think it's under twelve, get in free. And on the Friday night, it's five dollars to get in, and you can obviously you pay for your drink, and if you want to get something to eat, it starts about five o'clock. Mm -hmm. So you can go there about five and have a beer and uh, if they need to reach anybody to get tickets or do they just show up or well you can get tickets right at the gate or else they're selling tickets uh, at the la, la, la piazza and also at the north gate square so there's tickets available we were there on uh, on saturday afternoon last saturday afternoon we were at the north gate square oh. selling tickets and we had the pipe bands from from calendar and from uh, from North Bay Legion, okay. so they they did a little bit of piping and walked up and down the aisles. There. Better movie, Braveheart or Rob Roy? Personally, I think uh, Braveheart. You know, yeah. William is, Wallace. Yeah, William Wallace. Yeah, oh. from from. Uh, in fact, William Wallace came. His statue is not too far from Calendar, Scotland. Ah, uh, William Wallace is. It's in Stirling, Scotland. What a lucky segue that was for there me. You go, anyway. yeah, Thanks yeah. for coming in, Mr. Okay, Spears. thank enjoy, you very much. Enjoy Kelp Fest, and you get out and support Kelp Fest, too. I'll be back with sports right after this. I spent many nights crying myself to sleep. I was never that cool. I was never that in control. He said, you don't pronounce out your R's. You're not that good looking. Forget about it. He got in his knees, and he asked me to marry him. I just ate. Whenever I had a spare moment, I was eating cheesecake. Forty-two million HIV infections worldwide. Fifty-six thousand infections in Canada. Over seven thousand deaths in Ontario alone. There are sixteen thousand new HIV infections each day worldwide. 6,000 of those are in youth between the ages of 15 and 24. North Bay is part of these stats. Call the AIDS Committee of North Bay and Area. January 15th, 9.22 a.m. Raj Grewal straps on his gear and faces the toughest hockey challenge of his life. Why did Raj do this? Arvind. Arvind was why. Fatherhood. It's the best job on the planet. You can do it. July 24th, 6.45 p.m. Bob Smithers does his stretches and gets his body ready for a tough new routine. Why did Bob do this? Natalie. Natalie was why. Fatherhood. It's the best job on the planet. You can do it. Welcome back for sports, everyone. There was a time not that long ago the North Bay Centennials were one of the very best major junior hockey teams in all of the country. Now, as we all know, they are no more. But the memories remain, and on this date, 10 years ago, the franchise won its only OHL title when they defeated the Detroit Junior Red Wings 5-4 in overtime in game number 7 at the Gardens. Two of the players who played key roles on that team reside in North Bay, and I asked Brad Brown first, does it seem all that long ago? Not at all. Uh, 10 years goes by really, really quick, and uh, when I look back to 94, I have great memories of not only the team and how we came together, uh, the community, how that came together, and you know, and of course how Bert, you know, was a great coach and kept everything together for us. And the thing about that team, it was magical about how they came together so fast. There were so many young players in the team. You were a third-year guy by that point, but nevertheless, I mean, that was a very young team that had unlimited potential. Yeah, I think the previous summer, Bert, previous year, Bert went on a scouting trip and he was busy the previous year scouting and this and that, and uh, 
he brought in a good bunch of young guys who wanted to work hard and uh, it really showed from day one I think our team clicked and we, uh, we had a great year. It's unfortunate that Mr. Temple isn't here to share and, and thinking back and reflecting back on this. I know there's a lot of different opinions about Mr. Templeton, uh, you know, some good, some not so good, I guess, about how some players really loved him and some didn't. How did you characterize your relationship with him? I, I like Bert a lot, you know, he was a great mentor to me. On the ice, but off the, you know, mostly off the ice. He really uh, showed me how to be, you know, be a man and how to you know, live life right. And, uh, you know, I owe a lot to the Templeton family, for sure I do. I was just uh, nothing but good memories. I was pretty excited, especially it was uh, Game 7 at their home. is no better other place to be for Game 7. The sold out building was full house. It was overtime. It was great. And even most weird that we won. What do you remember about that team and what made it? Uh, there's a lot of good teams throughout the years in junior hockey and in pro hockey, but some teams just have that little extra that gets them over the top. Did this team have something special chemistry-wise? Was there some reason, or was it simply just talent and coaching? Well, I think it was simply talent and coaching, and uh, I don't know, I didn't speak English very well back then, and uh, I didn't know lots of same guys who, like, when they went out, what they talked about, so I can't tell about chemistry, but everything get along, seems to me, and we had a great team, and uh, quite a long young, young guys, about, I think, 12, 11 rookies on my team, and the way Bert uh, coach us, the way they put the lines together, and uh, you work out very well. The master of understatement, Vitaly Yachmanov, North Bay Hockey, at least major hockey, has never been the same since that team, and that's sad. Let's move on to the world of NDA soccer. First senior boys play, Algonquin edges Ferris 2-1, to one, and in the junior match, Ferris and Algonquin tied at 1-1. One, one. It'll be sports firing line tonight featuring myself, Joe Conlon, Chris Dawson, and Dick Prescott, the new president of the NOHA. So I'm sure all you minor hockey folks out there would have a chance or would like to have a chance to talk. Tonight's your night. So give us a call between 7 and 8. That is it for this edition of Kojiko North Bay News, an exclusive production of Kojiko Television. I'm Greg Astorbrooks, and please remember that Kojiko North Bay News is truly local television. Jerry do the grocery shopping. Of course I trust him. Making healthy choices for you and your family can be challenging. That's why the Heart and Stroke Foundation created the Health Check program. The Health Check symbol tells you a product meets nutrition guidelines for healthy eating. You know, Lucy, I'm sure he'll be just fine. I mean, it's not that difficult to make healthy choices. Health Check tells you it's a healthy choice. Kojiko Video On Demand, and you can start it whenever you're ready. And fast forward it whenever you want. Introducing Video On Demand from Kojiko Digital Cable.